Luminar AI's new update includes Portrait Bokeh AI and in this video I'm going to show you it working with just a few images so that you can get a feel for it. So let's dive right in. In this video I'm just going to show you a few examples used on images that perhaps have a slight bokeh effect in them. Now this is not to replace lenses that would do it, it's just to give you an, another effect that you can play with and perhaps enhance your images. So I'm going to go through just a few images with you today just to show you that. Uh, if I scroll down here you will see Portrait Bokeh AI and I'm going to click that and you'll notice that we have a mount, brush control and background. When you first open it up background will be closed. I've just been playing around with this for a wee while, so what I've done is I've left it open for me. First image I'm going to show you is this one here, this pregnancy shoot. Now some of the images that you will see I have tailored specifically to the genres that I think this would be most suitable for. This is a pregnancy shoot and all these images that I'm using today, apart from one, have came from Pexels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this slightly and you'll see the effect taking place. Now for me, as you know if you've watched any of my previous videos, it's always subtlety. And you can see what it's done, it's really softened the image. If I push it to 100%, it really softens the image and that just doesn't look right at all. So I'm going to go for subtlety in most of these images, so I'm just going to push it to around there. Now if I hover over, you will notice that it's created a mask already. It reads people really, really well and it reads multiple people in an image as well, really well. It doesn't read animals and it doesn't read products as yet. Just to let you know that in case you're thinking of diving in just to try it on that. So you'll notice here that it's also picked up some of the background elements here. So what I'm going to do is defocus them and I'm going to take the softness right up to 100% and the softness for that is actually the feather of the brush. Just in case you get that mixed up with the softness of the effect you're trying to apply. Opacity, I'm going to take it up to 100% just for the purposes of this video. I'm also going to drop the brush size using the square brackets on my keyboard and what I'm going to do is choose defocus and I'm just going to paint in there and you'll notice that I'm not going onto her hair or I'm trying not to go onto her hair just for this example. If I let that go you will see that it's defocused that area. Now that's it, that's how quick that was to use. If I show you the before, I'll just close portrait bokeh down. So there's the before image and there's the after. Quick, nice, easy effect and very, very simple to do. If I wanted to as well, on top of this, there is another new feature in this. And if I go into local masking and if I go into textures, so in the new texture selection, it actually gives you images of your texture. So you can go in and choose and you can see before you apply it roughly what texture you're going to use instead of by title. So I could cycle through all these. I can go in and get more textures, which will take me to Skylum's website, or I can actually add my own and I can go in to get my custom textures wherever I've stored them on my hard drive. The next image I'm going to show you is this one and if I go into edit and I go back up here you will notice that I've already edited this image and you can see where the mask has picked it up and the reason I'm just showing you this one is because I've already applied a template to this and I applied a template and then I applied the bokeh AI. For this the background was slightly soft so I've just increased the background softness or the bokeh effect in this slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the before and after and you can see everything that I've used here. I'll go into the edges and the depth correction in the next image. So if I close that down and if I show you the before and after, that's it before. You can see it still has depth of field in it. Uh, it's a soft background, it's been shot that way. But I've increased that slightly using Portrait Bokeh AI. I've also added a template to it and as I said you'll notice that I have picked certain images for this is because I see this being used more around certain genres. So does it work with groups of people? Yes it does. 
And what I'm going to do is you can see this one short shallow depth of field as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this to a hundred just to let you see the effect that you get. And there you have the final effect. So there's the before and the after, before and after. Okay, for this image, I'm going to show you how to use some of the depth correction and the edges correction as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this and I'm going to push this one quite a bit. As you can see, I've went for more wedding photography genre and I'm going to push this quite a bit. And I've got quite a nice effect there. I could take this right to 100 if I wanted. And you can see the effect that it's having through that image. I'm going to pull it back slightly. And then I'm going to get into the depth correction. So if you watch over here or here, you will see what happens with the depth correction. It reads down through the image even further. Too much? Yes, way too much there. So let's pull that back just slightly. But you will notice there's anomalies happening here. And I'm going to show you how to correct those anomalies. The anomalies you see are here, here, here. In here, here, and in there. In there, yes, I'll do, you can do as well, but for this video, I'm not going to zoom in and waste more of your valuable time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the defocus, and I'm going to take the brush a bit bigger here, and I'm just going to paint over that. Now, as I said, the softness refers to feather. It doesn't refer to the blurring of the image. So I'm going to take that in there and up round there and just see how that goes once it corrects itself. I'm going to go in there, wait for the update. I'm going to take the radius down a bit, take it in there. And you'll notice that I'm trying my hardest not to go into the actual image itself. And the reason for that is it will help apply a more subtle look to this. Where else were we? We were up here. And I'll just take that down round his hand there. And I'm working quite big. I'm working quite zoomed out. And if I make a mistake, I can get back in and focus. And I can just paint back out. Now, I'm using the feather to my advantage, or the softness, as it says. I'm using that to my advantage here by not painting on the edge. And hopefully that will help you as well. So I want to defocus up here. Right, and I need to zoom in. So I'm just using Control and Plus on this keyboard. And I want to defocus in here. So I'm going to go in here and just paint. And I'll do this again, as I normally say quite liberally, because of time. And hopefully you'll see that. Now, I've only a couple more images to show you. So hopefully you'll stick around to the end. But by now you should have the idea of this. Uh, where it can be used to your advantage. And where you would not use it. Now this does not replace the lens. But not everybody has the facilities or the finances to buy the lenses. So in the meantime it will actually work well for you. And it will also allow you to practice the effect so that you can see what shooting at a shallow depth of field could bring. And I am just going to go in there. I'll do that one quite quick for you so that I'm not wasting your time here, as I say. And I'll just move up the screen. I'm holding down the space bar to move. And I'll just go in there, down there. You get the idea. So... This just lets you see the effects that can be achieved. And you see, I'm working in here quite well and quite close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. And you can see a couple of bits I've missed. But hopefully you'll understand that I can just go in and paint that. And if I want the edges to be softer, what I can do is I can pull the opacity down. And then I can paint in. And that gives you a more subtle blend. So remember you can do that as well. There we go, and I will just zoom out here. So there you go, there's the before, and there's the after. Before and after. And hopefully you can see what it can do to the image. Last couple of examples, 
and then that's it for this video. One thing that I've found is it works better in contrasty images and also darker portraits. I've found it works really, really nice with them, as you saw with the previous image of the wedding portrait. But this one is well here with the contrast. That red is very contrasty against the background and it will, the depth map technology in this will separate. And I'll show you this working. If I go up to 100%, you can see the separation there straight away. Now that for me is way too much. That, that just doesn't work for me. So I'm going to pull that back a bit. And you'll notice is that that's a lot better. Now, how quick was that to do? It really, really was quick. Now, there is some times when you will be taking an image and you may be out and you're, you're shooting and you forget to open up the aperture. This is how you could recover it. So there we go with that one. The edges correction, I can take that up to 100%. And you'll see it's quite jaggy. So you've got to do everything subtly. The edges correction defaults at 20. So you can play with that slightly, just to about there. Uh, and it just shows you it's cut her out near enough perfectly. Now I wanted to see if it would work with every image. And as I said previously, uh, at the beginning of the video, it doesn't work with animals, it doesn't work with products that I've tried anyway. So I wanted to try it with one of my recent composites and it does work. So if I dive into this one here, this is just a recent composite that I've done. And if I go into Portrait Boca, and I increase that, now you'll see if I take that up to 100%, that happens. But if I hover over there, you'll notice that it has cut out everything in here. Now there's a couple of advantages and disadvantages to this, and that's simply because I'm working on a PC, and I'll tell you what they are in a second. So I'm going to pull that back a bit just to around about there. I don't want as hard an edge on the hair here or down the fur, and I also want to include that area there. So if I go into focus, and I take the opacity up to 100, and take the brush size down, I can refocus that area, and I can refocus that area. I also need the swords refocused as well, and that's where I mark is better for this but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hand paint this so it won't be perfect whereas on a Mac I could click at one point and click at another point while holding down shift and it will draw a straight line for me so there's that now brought back in that's in focus and you'll see with this part here when I do that to there, right? I don't really want to refocus this area here because there's light coming through that, so it doesn't matter for this anyway. But hopefully, you get the idea and you'll see how this works. So, it is quite handy, it can be very, very useful. It just depends what you want to do with it and how you want to use it. As I say, I tried it on a couple of phone shots. Because if you're like me, if I'm using my phone, I need to wear glasses. So going in to shoot in the professional modes that phones have now, I, where you can increase your depth of field or decrease your depth of field, whatever you want to do, I can't be bothered. I want to lift my phone and take a photo. It's only a keepsake or a, a memory uh, of where I was or for a scouting trip. So... It doesn't, I don't want to start going in and mucking around with that. But if you've taken a portrait and you think that would look nice with a softer effect on the background, perhaps this is one way you could do that as well. So you can see there that that's sharpened everything up. The swords, everything. If I, before and after, you see there's a massive difference in this. But I need to soften the hair there as well. So what I'm going to do is defocus. I'm going to drop the opacity right down. And I'm going to make the brush quite big. Again, I'm not going to take my time with this. I'm just going to show you how it works. So if I go in there, and you'll see I'm painting over the edge softly, and it's mainly the fur that I'm doing here, round there. Let's go down there, trying not to creep onto anything there, and let's go around there. Now, what I've done here is probably too much 
for this image, but hopefully you can get the idea. I may increase that slightly for the opacity, which basically is the strength of how much you're actually painting that. And I am only clipping the edge over, so it's softening the edge here of the fur. Before, after, before, after. So there you go, that's how Portrait Bokeh AI can work for you. Have a play with it because you learn more actually using it for yourself. A couple of other images that I've used it on. That one there, for example, before, after, before, after. This one here, before, after, before, and after. So you get the idea of this. I also used it on one that was that had already shallow depth of field. And if it's still set up, there you go, there to there. So you can even increase your depth of field with that. Hopefully you enjoyed that quickish introduction to Portrait Boca AI, which is included in the new Luminar AI update. Now nothing will beat the camera settings and your glass to get the perfect Boca effect, but this will allow you to play around and perhaps add it to images that you wish you had the Boca effect on. So it's definitely worth trying out and see where you can take it, where you can use it and where you can't use it, and that's the best thing. Been rather quiet in the channel recently and that's just due to holidays, family commitments and work commitments but that will begin to pick up again very very soon. I've also been gradually working on a series of tutorials based around compositing so I'll let you know when that will be available. That will be in the future but I've been working on them just now. If you've enjoyed this video and you've enjoyed this small introduction to Portrait Boca AI, please check out the other videos on the channel. They're mainly landscape videos, but if you're a Luminar or a Luminar AI user, there's lots of videos on that on the channel as well. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, which should be very soon.